Hello, my name is Chris Rogers. I'm a board certified physical medicine and rehabilitation physician in private practice in San Diego. I'd like to thank the San Diego Orthopedic Society for this opportunity to talk about some of the more commonly used orthobiologics in orthopedic therapy. These are my disclosures. So it's thanks to this gentleman that I got involved in regenerative medicine at all. Dave Phillips is a friend of mine. He's a co-founder of the Titleist Performance Institute here in San Diego and is one of the top golf instructors in the world. He's uh, Phil Mickelson's coach and he presented to me with tennis elbow in 2008 and said I need PRP. And I didn't know what PRP, most of us didn't. At that time, there was only one published paper in the literature, this is one by Dr. Mishra, where 20 patients were randomized to PRP uh, versus local anesthetic for chronic uh, tendinosis of the common extensor tendon, and he showed good results at a uh, two-year follow-up. So this encouraged me to treat uh, my patient. Here's the actual ultrasound image. You can see the hypoechoic changes in the common extensor tendon, consistent with tendinosis, uh, with tendon swelling and a partial tear. Uh, we figure out how to make PRP and inject it in his tendon and about six months later he was uh, asymptomatic, able to play golf and uh, we saw these changes on his ultrasound. Well since then there have been um, more than 26 randomized clinical trials published in the peer-reviewed medical literature for common extensor tendinosis and partial tendon tears and basically it shows that at two months corticosteroids are superior. However, Beyond that, and particularly greater than six months, PRP is superior. Now, there are some studies showing that uh, PRP is less effective. However, these studies tended to use a PRP that had a lower platelet count than is advised. Now, with regard to knee osteoarthritis, there's a robust literature, uh, more than 74 randomized clinical trials and more than 45 meta-analyses and systematic reviews, and there's not time today to review them with you. However, in short, uh, both leukocyte-rich and leukocyte-poor PRP have been associated with mild to moderate self-limiting adverse events. PRP is superior to placebo, corticosteroids, and high molecular weight hyaluronic acid at both 6 and 12 months using a variety of outcome measures. And uh, these outcomes tend to be better in patients who have more moderate, mild to moderate disease. And there's limited evidence that multiple injections are more effective than a single injection. Now there are about 10% of the literature that shows no benefit, and these studies tend to use a PRP that had a platelet count that was less than 4.8 times that of whole blood concentration. So whole blood being 200,000 uh, platelets per microliter, uh, you wanna have at least 4.8 times that in your PRP. In addition, these studies typically did not use ultrasound guidance. Now ultrasound guidance is important, and we now know that uh, using ultrasound guidance is superior to blind or landmark guided injections. If you're not using ultrasound, you're only going to get as good as about three out of four uh, injections in the joint, even using that uh, superior lateral uh, suprapatellar uh, approach. Uh, ultrasound guided knee injection can improve your accuracy up to 100%. And if you're using a one and a half inch needle in the anterior lateral joint space, very oftentimes you are simply injecting into the fat pad. This is what it looks like on a transverse view on the ultrasound. And you can see not only does the needle find itself nicely into the synovial fluid, but avoids more sensitive structures such as the tendon, synovial tissue, or uh, bone. And in terms of outcomes, this published paper looking at more than 1,100 patients showed that uh, patients who had hyaluronic acid gel injections uh, uh, without, uh, I'm sorry, with ultrasound guidance were 38% less likely to undergo joint Arthros, arthros, uh, arthroplasty, excuse me. And in obese patients, you're almost 50% less likely to undergo surgery if you simply made that uh, choice to use ultrasound guidance. PRP is not a standardized therapy. You can see by the looks of these different uh, formulations, even though they were all taken from the same patient, they have different platelet counts and different uh, red cell counts. And there are no, more than 60 different uh, devices that are commonly used to manufacture PRP, and only about 10% of them produce a platelet count that is sufficient to successfully treat knee osteoarthritis. So best practices would include uh, having a cell counter in your office where you can measure the platelet count at baseline and make sure that your final PRP product does have the appropriate number of platelets and a reduction in the red cell count. 
We use uh, this uh, outcome registry that I developed with two, of, uh, two other physicians uh, to track patient outcome over the long run. Uh, we look at adverse events, patient reported outcomes, satisfaction. We have more than 300 clinics currently using the software and more than 15,000 patients being tracked. Uh, in the database, but it helps us uh, not only generate real-time reports, as you see here looking at PRP for knee osteoarthritis in 2,000 patients, but also helps us identify the non-responders. And that's important because obviously any treatment uh, is only as good as your patient selection. And so patients who have been identified with poor response uh, include those who have high-grade chondral lesions, bone marrow edema, malalignment, uh, and other changes on MRI. So for those patients, we're going to switch to a different orthobiologic, lipoaspirate. Now, lipoaspirate is a good source of the mesenchymal stromal cells. People sometimes call them stem cells. We call them the MSC. And they're found in the MFAT, which is manufactured with a 510K clear device. Uh, or you can uh, take them to the lab and digest them with enzymes to pull out the cellular component called the stromal vascular fraction. Uh, or you can culture expand them to produce MSCs. But these, of course, require FDA approval. In this uh, retrospective uh, multi-center case series, I looked at 70, oops, we looked at uh, 75 patients, 120 knees, and essentially showed that 88% of the patients uh, who were treated with a single MFAT injection exceeded the MCID for Coos pain, and 91% were able to avoid surgery. The problem is you don't really know what's in that MFAT, and so for that I had to join this company, Personalized Stem Cells, where we manufacture stromal vascular fraction and culture expanded MSCs in a GMP facility. And you have known cell count, viability, identity, as well as being able to test for sterility. And uh, this, this publication of our current, uh, of our clinical trial uh, is, is in review, but essentially was an FDA approved phase 1, 2A clinical trial. And we looked at 29 subjects with an average age of almost 66 years uh, with more advanced knee osteoarthritis. And many of them had bone marrow lesions and uh, other findings that would not be appropriate for PRP therapy. And we uh, collected lipoaspirate uh, and manufactured uh, at a GMP facility the frozen uh, product, which was then injected by ultrasound guidance. And we got about 4 million of these SVF cells uh, per dose, which was about 20% of the adipose MSC. The remainder of the cells were, are banked for future use, and this is a service that's currently available where we have cryopreserved MSCs in the bank with a minimum of uh, 12 million uh, MSCs per vial, uh, providing uh, essentially unlimited number of treatments for future use uh, because repeat treatments are often necessary in these patients. And so uh, in our study, we had a mean follow-up of uh, 2.6 years. Uh, we were able to show that uh, there was very good safety. Six of the patients did undergo joint replacement. However, five of those reported that they were satisfied or very satisfied at one year uh, follow-up. So repeat injection would have been made sense for them. Uh, we showed that almost 74% of the patients exceeded MCID for all the five coup subscales at three months, and those benefits persisted out to greater than two years. Uh, and satisfaction was also reported to be high, with 77% of the patients reporting being satisfied or very satisfied. So we learned that the treatment is safe. We learned it's effective at reducing pain and improving function. The benefits are long-lasting. Uh, we may need to increase the uh, MSC dose in the future, uh, but repeat treatments uh, at one to two years will probably be required for some of those patients as well. Thank you for your attention.